Today I will share with you the Egyptian experience with uh, the control of hepatitis C. Uh, this is my disclosure. Uh, we, ha Egypt has unfortunately one of the highest prevalence of hepatitis C in the world. I think it's Egypt and Mongolia, Cameroon, I think somewhere in South America. And uh, Egypt was the fourth country in the world in sheer numbers. Of course, uh, China, Pakistan, and Nigeria uh, have higher numbers because of the higher population they have. And so the prevalence of HCV in Egypt was estimated in 2015 to be about 4.7% overall. Egypt has a population of 90 million, so with about 4 million Egyptians with the C. The prevalence is higher in the age group 15 to 59, where it reaches about 7%. So it's obviously a national epidemic with social, economic, political implications and is the leading uh, health channels. Uh, why do you have such a high prevalence? This most, uh, most investigators believe that this issue started during mass uh, parental treatment of schistomyces in Egypt, which was in the 50s, 60s, and 70s of the last century. And of course, this is replaced by oral medication for schistomyces in the early 1980s. The main genotype in Egypt is genotype 4, and unfortunately, we have estimated that between 150,000 to 200,000 Egyptians acquire hepatitis C every year. So this is the date in 2015, as, you, as I mentioned. The prevalence is much higher in the older age groups than in the younger age groups. And we have data on incidence in Egypt. We, the Ministry of Health assumes that about 2 to 2.25 Egyptians per 1,000 population are infected every year. And the strongest indicator of a infection would be a positive family member, usually a father or a mother. And uh, the highest incidence of serial conversion is under 20 years of age. There was a mathematical modeling done with the University of Hawaii, a friend of mine, Dr. D. Miller, he assumed that with the incidence is about 6.6 uh, per every thousand infections a year, which would amount to about 514 uh, new cases a year. We object to that. This is in contrast to the incidence in Europe, which is less than, of course, less than 0.01% per year. And this is the burden of that CNB in Egypt. In 1996, we had an estimate of about 22% of hepatitis C. The prevalence of hepatitis B at that time was 4.5%. We did a survey in 2008, the demographic and health survey, which estimated that HCV RNA positivity in about 10% of Egyptians. This was repeated in 2015, we had an estimate of, as I mentioned, of 7% of, uh, of age group 15 to 59, and overall about 4.5%. The HBSAG positivity in Egypt is about 1%. So until 2006, Egypt did not have a comprehensive national program for HCV. We didn't have large nationwide surveys. We didn't have accurate prevalence data. Uh, we, the government did not support treatment of HCV at all. We had no national guidelines for treatment, and infection control is very limited. So what we have established in 2006 was the National Committee for Control of Viral Hepatitis, NCCVH. We had specific targets. One was to do a national survey, which we did in 2008 and 2015. The second target was to develop a national strategy. So we had a national strategy for 2008 till 2012. We have a plan of action from 2014 to 2018. Manel, my colleague, was in charge of that. We had a treatment program, which I will elaborate further. And we had a program for prevention with awareness and infection control, clinical research, and management of advanced liver disease. And I'm proud to say that in Egypt right now, we have about over 15 centers which conduct regular liver transplants, which is offered at the government expense. So we, developments we've had we, for treatment from 2011 to 2016, we did a lot of trials with all DAAs, which were useful in genotype four. We specifically started negotiations with Gilead access program for a special pricing for Sofos Bovir in 2014. 
We did a web-based national patient enrollment program for people who enrolled. We have so far about 1.5 million patients have enrolled themselves. The first patient started DAs in October 2014, and after that, other DAs were introduced. And as I mentioned, the plan, action plan was started in 2014. So we have, in the last years, established 55 centers all over Egypt. Every new we have, in Egypt, we have 27 governorates, and we have, in every government, two or three centers. Each center has a, the trained doctors. <clears throat> we have about 1,500 trained doctors all over our centers, a computer system which, which connects all these centers, uh, a lab, uh, ultrasound, and so forth. And this is how a patient apply for treatment. They go to our website, NCCVH, National Committee for Control of Viral Hepatitis. They enroll themselves. They take an appointment the following day. They come and do the blood test, ultrasound. They evaluate, they evaluate in the clinic, specialized clinics. The data is sent to the National Network of Treatment Centers. The, it's reviewed, the results, the outcome of each patient is reviewed. Decision is given to treatment. The patient receives the treatment, and all his data is, is stored in our national network of treatment centers. And this is how this is a web based program in Arabic, of course. This is the general information for the patient. Uh, the patient has to fill in his national ID, of course, his name, his mother's name, which government he comes from, and his mobile number. The next day, he's given an appointment. He has to print this appointment. There's a place of appointment, time, date, national ID, and his name. He has to come with this, with this, with this uh, paper to be printed. Uh, he has a list of labs which has to come with, and he, it's, the, the labs and tests are done for free at the government's expense. And then there's frequently asked questions. Uh, what, when do I get treated? What about age? What about my liver condition? And so forth. And these are the number of patients who have actually applied for treatment until the beginning of November 2016. Over 1.5 million infected people have applied for treatment. Uh, the first day this portal was established was in September 18th, 2014. 100,000 people applied in the first day. Now the count is down to about 1,000 new patients per day in November 2016. And about a little less than a third of the patients are Two -thirds of, less than two thirds of the patients are male, and females are less than a third. And this is the age groups, mainly uh, the age group between 51 to 60, followed by the age group between 41 to 50. And then the, this is the file which the patient is filled by the doctor in our, in our treatment centers, with of course the name and so on, and his name, portal number, ID number, uh, his treatment status, if he's naive or experienced, uh, weight, height, BMI, uh, previous history, special situations, if he's on dialysis, post liver transplantation, post chemotherapy, and so on. And then here are his lab results, including, of course, HCV RNA, liver functions, pregnancy testing, ANA, and so forth. And ultrasound is done, and fibrosis scoring. Initially, we had to do, we did the liver biopsy, then followed by fibro scan, now we don't do this anymore. And then there's a treatment decision whether the patient will receive the treatment option as sophos bovir semi semi-previous sophos bovir, sophos bovir declatasvir, sophos bovir ledipasvir, the 2D combination of AVI, the 2D combination of AVI with ribavirin, and we have a code list for extrahepatic diseases. And this is the chronology of treatment in our centers. In 2007 to 2014, we were treating with peg interferon ribavirin, only for F1 to F3 patients. In October 2014 till May 2015, we were treating with uh, sulfur bovir peg interferon ribavirin if the patients are F3, F4, or interferon tolerant. If they are intolerant, we, we used to take sulfur bovir ribavirin for six months. In May 2015, we had introduced semi prevere and <laughs> a patient with impaired the uh, function would, would be treated up to child six, A6. In November 2015, we opened treatment for all fibrosis groups, F0 to F4. Anybody with any fibrosis stage would be treated. The exception would be patients with a child score of over B7, 
but we treat them in special centers. And this is type nine for treatment. So the total number being treated in Egypt in, from, 2000, from October to 2014 till November 16 is about 880,000 patients. The majority are in, <coughs> in the treatment centers, but also in health insurance, cash patients, and other hospitals. And this is our outcome of treatment. This is the outcome of treatment with interferon, so far, bovirubavirin, which is uh, now obsolete. We don't give interferon anymore. We had an SVR rate of about 90%. Uh, this is our, uh, with so far, but we semi prevere with an SVR rate of about 93%. With the sofas, which is the mainstay of treatment right now, we have an SVR rate of about 95%. And so what we declare as we revive is about 95% as well. So here's the summary for treatment, for outcome treatment protocols. As I mentioned, soft, soft interferon by viral, 90%, soft ribavirin was 76% only, and similar results with soft sim, soft DAC, soft DAC ribavirin of over 90%. So what is the economic burden which is in Egypt? We did the study with uh, Homer of the Daphne and other authors. We estimate that the direct health cost of HDB in Egypt is about 600 million per year. In diet economic impact, about 3.7 billion a year. It, uh, it consumes close to 1.8% 1, 1. of the GDP of Egypt. And the treating of a large number of patients, like we have done, would cure a patient, would, would cost us, would save $110,000 in the next 15 years. Preventing a case would save us with $20,000. And what are the challenges we have in Egypt? We have to make sure that the generic drugs we have in Egypt are of quality assurance. We prefer to have voluntary licensing from the multinational corporations, and we are hoping that a lot of them will get pre-qualification. We need to have more legislation regarding HCV in Egypt. We need to have more patient support groups. We need to have more access in remote areas. We hope to have shorter duration of treatments, and we hope to soon, with Manel also, to start treatment of children, which we don't do until now. We need to screen. Now, and now we have treated about almost a million patients. We don't have enough patients anymore, so obviously we need to have a nationwide screening program. Should we rely on rapid testing for HCV? What about compulsory testing? And what about repeat testing? And we need to monitor for, for quality, and as we mentioned before, stigma for HCV in Egypt is very strong. Even people, young people with HCV are barred employment because of their illness. We have constraints in Egypt. The healthcare system is very fragmented uh, with the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, health insurance, private hospitals, military hospitals, police hospitals, which are not coordinated together. We need to have a multi-sectorial action plan which would encompass all these, uh, all these hospitals. Uh, we need to have less financial constraints. Uh, so finally, these are the members of the National Committee for Control of Viral Hepatitis. And uh, we had a WHO TAG committee for prevention, control, and treatment. And we had like to acknowledge all the support. And this is the famous uh, Tahrir Square in Egypt. And uh, <coughs> one of the main aims of the, our repeated revolutions was to achieve social justice in Egypt. We've achieved some, and we hope to achieve more than that. Thank you.